On the 31st of December 2021, Creepshow Art made their return back to the internet. Many people were stunned as they watched Shannon completely desecrate everything it is that they worked so hard to achieve. With no apology, no accountability, and no remorse. Creepshow Art essentially reaffirmed everybody's belief that she was indeed a stalker, a bad person, a creep. But what if I was to tell you that there's a possibility that not everything is as it seems and that just like with every private dispute that makes its way public, this situation is full of a lot of nuances. Nuances that even Emily Artful herself acknowledges. What if Creepshow Art was the manipulator and the manipulated? What if she was both the victim and the perpetrator. I want to make it explicitly clear from the beginning that there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that Creepshow Art was involved in the harassment of Emily Artful. There are simply too many coincidences for this to be that uncanny. However, in Creepshow Art's video, I found it interesting that Creepshow Art would go so far out of their way defending their spouse and not really doing much as to defend themselves. The defense that was framed for Crete Show Art was the protection of Anthony. And I question that. Why? Why was Creepshow Art the fall guy for several actions that wasn't their own? Especially when they were in hot water with a lot of friends and online associates due to the lol cow situation. Why did they touch on everything outside the parameters of what directly affected them? Well, I have a theory. So come with me on a journey as we discuss in this video essay the reason why Creepshow Art left the internet in the way that she did. This is Creepshow Art, the Artful Dodger. So just to bring everybody up to speed who wasn't aware of what has happened with Creepshow Art, here is a brief 60 second recap. Creepshow Art, real name Shannon, is a YouTube commentator from the USA. At the height of her popularity, Creepshow Art amassed over half a million subscribers. In June 2021, Creepshow Art was exposed by a website forum called lolcow.farm for using their website to promote content, talk badly on friends and family, doxing family members, stalk and white knight their own forums under the guise of being Creepshow Art's hater, and so on and so forth. After this was exposed, Creepshow Art made a lengthy post in the community tab in which they blamed someone, a stalker of theirs called Amy. People felt like this was bullshit and she was promptly cancelled. Emily Artful, another art YouTuber, decided to make two videos regarding Creepshow Art and how she believes that Shannon and her partner Anthony had been stalking and harassing her for a number of years. As as well as Anthony allegedly r word in Gamelin. Creepshow Art then left the internet and never came back until the 31st of December 2021, where she made a video stating that Emily Artful's allegations against her and her husband were both defamatory and slanderous, and that essentially she had accused both Shannon and her husband of committing crimes. Okay, so now that you're up to speed with everything that is Creepshow Art and the whole situation that took place, in the past six to seven months, let's go ahead and discuss why I believe Creepshow Art's video was shit. So on New Year's Eve, Creepshow Art made a video on Emily Artful titled The Lies of Emily Artful in brackets with evidence. This was a 2.5 hour video, which came complete with a boring gray screen and monotone reading of a script. Creepshow Art starts the video by stating that this video 
video was created for posterity. This video is being made for posterity to show I didn't do what I was accused of and to show that what Emily has accused me and my husband of not only never happened to her, but could not have happened. I feel like this is an important reference because for some reason, a lot of people on the internet seem to believe that Creepshow Art was trying to prove their innocence to them and the court of public opinion would have some kind of say. But I have to make this clear. The video wasn't for us. It wasn't to make us comfortable or even to give any kind of compassion or leniency towards Shannon and her partner. It was to state their position for the record and allow the burden of proof to fall back onto Emily Artful. In this video, Shannon goes on to outline how they believe that Emily Artful's video was defamatory with no tangible and distinguishable proof that could ever hold up in a court of law. And also how she could prove that neither her or Anthony could have had any involvement in any of the instances of harassment that Emily Artful alleges in regards to stalking and harassment. So I wrote down some cliff notes just so we can discuss the most important parts of this 2.5 hour long video. Part one, Shannon shows the history of Anthony, Shannon's husband's relationship with Emily and presents the notion, in my humble opinion, that Emily was unhinged in the classic crazy ex-girlfriend trope. Part two, Shannon presents that Emily has a history of drug abuse and can't keep her timeline straight of when they actually stopped using drugs. I believe that this was to lead the listener that what Emily had remembered was under the influence of some kind of drug induced bender. Part three, Shannon shows the audience that Emily had a long standing issue with harassment outside the parameters of both Anthony and Shannon, which she discussed online as far back as 2000. This was to show the audience that the harassment that Emily endured couldn't necessarily be pinned down to Creepshow and Anthony, but rather there had been a long-standing issue with several people harassing Emily long before Anthony and Creepshow came into the picture. Part four, Shannon shows a well-known anime account called Emily Sugarfruit that was harassed online by the anime community. There were several videos that were made in and around 2013 about the account that Emily ran, as well as talking about the harassment that Emily endured. This was again to show that there was a history of harassment outside the parameters of both Shannon and Anthony. Part six, and we are skipping over five and I'll come back to as to why, Shannon presents that Emily frequently showed her audience their location and was extremely relaxed in their online personal security. This again was to bring up the notion that literally anybody could have been stalking Emily. Part seven, Shannon shows the DMs that Emily received via Snapchat was a part of a viral marketing campaign that some art influencers, as well as a well-known art influencer called Sid Wilder, had been receiving. That was also to show that the messages that Emily had been receiving was not targeted harassment, but as part of some kind of campaign to get people to watch a viral video. Part 10, Shannon goes on to debunk further Emily artful speculations, as well as to show that they willingly gave their details in order for Emily to serve her and Anthony with a restraining order to put their mind at ease. So this was to show that Creepshow Art was in fact helpful or as helpful as they could possibly be by giving Emily Artful their personal details so that if Emily Artful wanted to file a restraining order in order to put their mind at rest that they were 100% at liberty to do so. Essentially trying to rule themselves out as a suspect. Part 11, Shannon proves that Emily exists and this is just a coincidence that both Emily and Shannon had stalkers for around the same amount of time. However, this part of it honestly leaves more questions than answers as a lot of people have pointed out that in the emails that Shannon shows, it shows that the person signed off as Emily and not as a pseudonym when in their long community tab post that they posted, they stated that they used the pseudonym of Amy in order to protect the person's identity. So which one is it? These were all the relevant parts. Anything else that was brought forward was completely unnecessary to the argument that Shannon was trying to build. Is it character building to show all the shitty things it is that Emily Artful has done and said in the past? Yeah, sure. 
But when Emily Artful themselves admits that they have a pretty abherent and shitty past, the character building of Emily is a bad person doesn't really work anymore. Nobody needs to know that she posted weird stuff as a teenager on Live Journal or that she was a bit of a troll online. None of this helped to build Shannon's case and only proved what lengths Shannon would go to to find a gotcha moment. I'd also like to mention that Shannon responded to her sister as well as somebody by the name of Kevin Adam Colton who both came forward to give character references on who Creepshow art really is behind the scenes and how bad of a person Shannon and Anthony are. But again, both of these things were unnecessary when trying to prove the case that Emily Artful is defamatory. Others' alleged defamatory statements doesn't prove that Emily was allegedly defamatory. All of the unimportant bits amounted to one hour and seven minutes. And that means that one hour and seven minutes of this video didn't need to be made. Meaning that this video could have been a far more digestible one hour and 24 minutes and wouldn't have made Creepshow reaffirm to their audience that they are indeed the crazy stalker that Emily Artful alleges them to be. Now, Emily states on Twitter that they will be providing a response to refute some claims as well as bringing forward their ex-boyfriend, Bob, who will also corroborate some of Emily's claims against Shannon and Shannon's perceived timeline. No date on when this is going to happen as Emily is in the middle of a move, but we await it with bated breath. Emotional blackmail tactics are used by abusers in order to threaten to get what they want. In placing demands and threats, they instill fear, guilt, anger, and solicit compliance from their victims. In doing so, they divert blame and responsibility to the victim for their own negative actions. Typically, this dysfunctional, toxic manipulation happens in close relationships. Now, I have a theory. I call it the Anthony theory because when writing this essay, I was willing to write this whole entire thing off as a cut and dry case. Creepshow art was wrong and involved. And whilst I still believe that, I also believe in humanizing content creators. When discussing this story with one of my researchers, they pointed out one very important fact that Emily Artful had named Anthony as their personal abuser. And if we are to believe what Emily has said to be true, which I think for the most part, pretty much everybody can agree that there is definitely some truth to Emily's personal account of events, then we can't negate the fact that the man that allegedly abused Emily is now the spouse of Shannon and that Shannon may be subject to their abuse. Now I have to say from the outset that this theory is based on my speculation, based on the information that I've been able to find online. I cannot verify anything that I'm about to say as it is a theory, but I will however present my argument and leave you guys to make up your own mind as to whether you guys believe that my theory can be confuted. I think that what is happening with Shannon could be coercive control. Coercive control is when a person with whom you are personally connected behaves in a way that makes you feel controlled, dependent, isolated, and scared. Types of coercive control can contain isolating you from your friends and family, controlling how much money you have and how you spend it, monitoring your activities and movements, repeatedly putting you down, calling you names, and telling you that you're worthless, threatening to unalive you or, or your child, threatening to publish information about you or report you to the authorities, damaging your property or your personal goods, or forcing you to take part in criminal activity. And I believe that this is a critical one as I believe that this could be the case with Creepshow Art. I believe personally that Anthony could be demonstrating coercive control over Shannon. I say this because of some key things it is that Shannon has said in their video regarding Anthony, as well as some similarities between their experience with Emily Artful and what it is that she alleges Anthony used to do. Here is Emily's account of their relationship according to her. And I basically expressed that I am deeply unhappy. I don't know if this relationship is a good thing or a bad thing. I'm very vulnerable. And every time that would happen, 
happened, we would cry, we would hug, and we would go right back to that codependent relationship. It was a short-lived relationship, but it was very memorable because of how often I was afraid of Andrew and deeply concerned about what he might do, not just to me, but to other people. Um, he would often punch holes in the drywall of his home. It was definitely concerning. Um, I also came to find out um, years later that Andrew was regularly flirting and essentially cheating on me, um, exchanging photographs with other women. Um, which is really funny because the reason we broke up is because I commented on my very openly gay friends, I think Facebook picture like, ooh, you look hot today, double winky face. And that caused Andrew, I guess, to go into a rage. And so he had his best friend Brandon call me and call me um, a slut and threaten me, threaten to curb stomp me, to hurt me. And uh, just repeating, I hope you're happy. I hope you're happy. You hope you you can never live with yourself again. You are so filthy. And just, just berated me, just completely and utterly berated and shamed me and made me feel like a piece of shit. I cried. I was upset. I couldn't get a hold of Andrew after that. Now, in Shannon's defense video of Anthony regarding the Snapchat harassment that Emily alleges, Creature Art made one factor slip that was extremely interesting to me. That Anthony couldn't have been behind the Snapchat account because both her and Anthony shared a phone at the time. We can prove that Anthony and I had no part in this because he didn't have a phone at the time that this would have occurred and we shared mine. Now, I don't know if this is just me, but I I find it very hard to believe that in the 21st century that anyone wouldn't have a phone for a prolonged period of time. If my husband had means to get a phone but then chose not to and decided to use mine, my assumption would be that he was doing that because he wanted to limit my privacy. To stop me from having the ability to contact friends or family without their surveillance or say on the matter. I also wonder if Anthony had anything to do with the local threat. I say this because Shannon still maintains to this day that they had absolutely no involvement in the Lolcal situation. Is it possible that Anthony was posting these things? Lolcal stated that it was the geolocation of Shannon's IP address across multiple devices and where they were situated was how they were able to pin down who was making all of these posts. Is it possible that Anthony sharing multiple devices with Shannon posted these things about Shannon's friends, their family, and even the disparaging comments about Shannon herself. I mean, picture this. They were both homeless at one point, living out of their cars, trying to make ends meet and following their passions. And the person that helped them move on out of their car and start living the life of their dreams was Shannon. For all intents and purposes, Anthony's passion projects never took off. And I could imagine that would make him incredibly disgruntled and jealous and angry with Shannon. Possibly telling her that the people online weren't truly her friends. And when the Lal Cal thread was leaked and the friends didn't stand beside her, maybe he was able to reaffirm that they were never really your friends and never to be trusted. And the only person that they can trust is him. Shannon's choice to leave the internet in the way that she did honestly speaks volumes to me. It seemed to me, just in her voice and in her tone, that she seemed to feel betrayed and alone. You are just as bad as Emily, if not worse, for supporting a mob with no evidence while claiming to do all this research and claiming to care about your friends or anything. I truly believe that it's quite possible that Shannon could have known about Anthony's involvement in the Lalcal threat and couldn't throw her husband under the bus so created this Amy story as a lie that was able to protect them. While still maintaining the fact that even though Lalcal had posted that it was Shannon that posted all of these posts to Lalcal, that it was complete and utter lie because I guess in that instance, it kind of was, allegedly. Coercive control or a controlling behavior in any relationship is seen as a pattern of acts designed to make a person subordinate or dependent, achieved by isolating them from things such as support, exploiting their resources and capacities for personal gain, depriving them of a means of independence, resistance and escape, as well as regulating their everyday activities. A key to this behavior is an appreciation 
repetition of a pattern or a series of acts. The impact of which has to be addressed cumulatively rather than in isolation. The independence that she gained as her own person online most likely frightened her alleged abuser. So how better to regain control than to destroy everything that she has. It was Anthony who had an alleged history of stalking, harassment and abuse. It was Anthony that allegedly abused Emily all throughout that time. And that Creepshow Art's alleged involvement only became more prominent in more recent years. But I personally believe that this whole situation backfired tremendously when Emily came out with their video and held up a mirror towards Anthony so that he could see exactly who he really is and the reflection scared him. Even Emily Artful corroborates that so much has been hidden from Shannon by Anthony. And I'm not bringing this up to be bitchy. I'm bringing this up because I truly believe that Anthony hid a lot from Shannon. Even though the things that Shannon did to me were unconscionable and cruel, I believe that she was also a victim here. I believe that Anthony played on her hatred for me, as well as her emotional dependence on him. For God's sake, she dropped everything to go live out of her car, an experience she herself called absolutely miserable, just to be with him. I will never forgive or forget what Shannon did to me. And her being a victim doesn't excuse her horrible behavior. But I do think it's important we acknowledge that. So maybe Shannon was a patsy in a long and elaborate scheme to attack Emily. Or maybe all of these are completely a figment of my imagination and that Anthony is a really great guy. The lol cow situation was the only thing not to be discussed. Not even approached, not in the Google document, not even in the video. I personally believe that's because there is some guilt there. Guilt that either she did all of the aforementioned things it is that lol cow accused her of, or guilt in knowing her husband's alleged involvement and wanting to protect him. And that's one thing I noticed about the situation is that Shannon will go above and beyond to protect Anthony whilst providing little to no protection for herself. Shannon seems to be so concerned with a video with allegations against her and her husband, so much so that she is willing to dig deep and dive into the internet and cross-reference pictures of Emily's childhood bedroom wallpaper, but has absolutely no energy for the alleged defamation from the forum that was essentially the catalyst for her public assassination. A video by an extremely talented video essay YouTuber called Kidology goes over why Creepshow, if correct, could have a case against Lol Cow should she decide to pursue it and could most likely win. The website is alleged to have breached several data protection laws and computer security laws and their flimsy website disclaimer would not have protected them from that. Not in a court of law anyway, maybe in the court of public opinion. Hi guys, editing page here. Um, I was going to make this lol cow section of Kidology's video a lot shorter, but I honestly feel as if it needs to be seen in its entirety. I could not have made any better points even if I tried. So I will be definitely leaving a link to the entire 50 odd minute video it is that she made, but I just wanna say, I apologize that I couldn't just shorten this part down because I feel like every piece of this needs to be seen. Um, enjoy. Lolcow.farm is a chat forum, a gossip forum. There are very noticeable characteristics of this forum, namely that everybody who posts is anonymous and that there are particular rules going in and before you can post to Lolcal. A creator who I think should have been at the forefront of this entire situation from the get-go is High Tech with Grumpo. High Tech with Grumpo is a computer scientist and this is her specialism. She is absolutely brilliant. She's incredible. Her videos on this were amazing when she put them out and are even more prescient and amazing now. Most people are saying that Lolcal is a toxic forum but 
they're on the side of Lol Cow because Shannon lied to all of us. And they exposed her and they had every right to expose her because she broke the rules. This is where I am going to give my opinion, but it's more of an opinion about the company and data privacy. <laughs> Personally, I think that the idea of revoking anyone's anonymity for the sake of you thought you could outsmart me is deplorable. I think that regardless of what they posted about anonymously, if they posted something about harming someone or something, um, then go to the police. You don't have to make this a super public thing. I think we're all entitled to privacy to an extent. And for me personally, this kind of crosses a line. I'm of the opinion that what happens between you and the internet should stay between you and the internet, you and your web browser, and be protected by whoever stores your data and not just exposed. And I also think that making it everyone's business was irresponsible on Lolcow's part. Like I said, they have nothing to definitively tie it to Shannon unless she either told them at some point that she was Shannon or they used one of those passwords for post deletion in one of her accounts, which is still not okay. <laughs> that means that by exposing her, they either definitively exposed her, definitively knew what they were doing, so therefore they had hacked one of her accounts using a password that she gave them that's similar to her other accounts, or they took a gamble and said it was her without definitive evidence. Now, like, a lot of people have opinions on, like, whether the circumstantial evidence is enough, but if I were the one taking that risk, I know that that would be opening me up to a lawsuit. I say she definitely did this, and then I can't definitively prove that it was her. She can sue me for defamation. She's lost 60,000 subscribers at the time of filming this. So she can very easily prove damages because the admin very obviously outed her and her career has taken a turn at this point. If it were me, I would not take that risk because a big lawsuit, YouTuber money. I know I couldn't afford somebody losing 60,000 subscribers. I suppose my point is that lol cow exposed her. It was either definitive or not. And either way, it's bad. The definitive way they hack somebody, bad. The non-definitive way, they open themselves up to slander, bad. <laughs> so can we say for sure whether Shannon did anything wrong? As spectators, we may actually never know. It sounds like there have been some behind the scenes talks. People have come out with their opinion, but we don't have evidence and Lolcow doesn't really either. One thing I can say is that Lolcow has questionable at best morals and I would discourage anybody from using them. In short, there's absolutely no way that we can prove that Shannon was behind all of these posts which this local admin purports she is behind. I wanted to get a feel for the site and again see what sort of information I would have to give this site in order to use it. I was gonna cut this part out because it makes me look bad. I'm not proud of this, um, but I'm an incredibly curious person and sometimes my curiosity can get the better of me. Um, I may or may not have applied for a sysadmin job there. The, there was a link. It was directly under the like make a post button. I was going to make a post and I wanted to know more because I was really curious at this point. So I briefly applied to be a sysadmin there. They actually reached out to me and they were super nice, which is why I feel bad about this. But to get a feel for what the admins do, I asked, what are the responsibilities? What's the time commitment, etc." cetera. Um, it turns out that there's only one sysadmin right now. This would be the second sysadmin. So remember when I said that companies, even smaller companies, companies smaller than Twitter, uh, the company that I was at was smaller than Twitter at the time when I was doing fraud or <laughs> not committing fraud, but like researching fraud. And there were seven of us working on identity bridging. There's only one person who does identity bridging, apparently. 
It's a really tough problem. So that was that was really interesting because this person is responsible for keeping the site up. Reliability, performance, making sure the site is fast enough. Scalability, making sure the site can handle more people as it grows. And a lot of sites, that's what they do, they grow. Especially now that Lolcow has gotten all of this press, really, from Creepshow Art. They're probably growing quite a bit. So... <laughs> You have one person who's doing all of that, and I was on Lolcow earlier today looking over it, and the site went down. They had an outage. So this individual was taking care of this outage. This individual is likely the person who takes care of all of the outages, and they do a seven-person job that the seven people aren't very good at. <sighs> that seems too good to be true, really. <laughs> Like that person, like, I don't know if that site generates revenue. In order for a site to fall under the California Privacy Act, they have to be generating over $20 million, I believe, in revenue or get their revenue from selling data. And since the site is like mostly anonymous, there's not that much data that it could sell. So this person has to be making money somehow or selling questionable data, which I'll get into. They're responsible for keeping the site up and... And they do identity bridging, which not even seven people could do well. <laughs> so let's keep this in mind. All of this is important, I swear. And a major, major problem here as well. Interestingly enough, which I am actually a bit horrified <laughs> that we have not been speaking about with regards to this, is how local actually, if they do have indisputable evidence that all of these posts were posted by Shannon, that is specifically by her, which they have not proved as of the date that I am putting this video out. That is a breach of privacy on so many levels. This is the kind of thing that if Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> did, I think the world would be in flames. I think that this is very important. While moderators did not explicitly explain why they believed the account to belong to Shannon, Lokal uses cookies, a small piece of data that holds information that moderators can cross-reference with IP addresses to discern who runs each account posting on the site. The interesting thing about Lol Farm, though, is that you don't create an account on this site. You just post things. So knowing that, the question of how did they tie this all to one individual over several years becomes extremely interesting and challenging. A big guess was indefinite cookies, and I'll get to that. But with respect to IP addresses, during some of this, she was using various public Wi-Fi at various locations, I believe, unless I got her timeline wrong. I don't know too, too much about her, so I wouldn't know. But multiple devices, multiple IP addresses no account. All of that implies that either they have indefinite cookies, they're full of crap, or there's a third ambiguous way that they're tracking you. So commentary channels mentioned this when they covered it, but Lolcow has outed YouTubers for breaking the rules on their platform before, and these YouTubers have admitted to making the posts. Them being full of crap seems a little less likely. So it's either the cookies thing or the some other mysterious thing. It's editing me here. I've done a little bit more research and thinking and what I found is quite interesting. I think that a viable explanation for how local.farm is able to claim that Shannon is behind the 200 various posts is via zombie cookies. This is the practice of recreating deleted cookies. When done for commercial reasons, many major companies have been taken to court and they have lost because it can be proved that users were victims of unfair deception and unlawful business practices and that their privacy, their financial interests and computer security rights were violated. And I do believe that Shannon can prove this and can show this based on the information given by Lokal. In 2012, consumers alleged that Google itself used 
zombie cookies that continue to collect consumers' browsing information even after they actively set up controls to block the use of cookies. The case ended with $5.5 million in settlement. Yet, whatever the explanation may be, Shannon not admitting guilt, firstly, and also being able to evidence that a breach of privacy was committed against her if these posts were made by her and it can be proved definitively that they were made by her, which I do not think is the case. This can be used in a lawsuit and a defamation case against Lolcal. And she could very likely win. Okay, so High Tech with Grumpo is a YouTuber whose entire existence is internet security. They aren't just knowledgeable, they are extremely versed in this kind of net security. They basically made a video stating that Lolcal never really had the gotcha moment it was that they were aiming for. Because unless Shannon admits to the things that was accused of them by Lolcal, Lolcal then has to prove that she did what they alleged. Otherwise, it's defamation. And that would either be through proving two things, either that they have hacked creep show art with information that she gave to them such as a password etc etc or they would have to admit that they use zombie cookies to retrieve her personal data and cross-reference it with the other 290 plus posts it is that they alleged that shannon had posted to the forum either way they would have broken the law in some way and if a defamation case was launched against lolcal the burden of proof would actually be on lolcal to prove that she did the things that they allege and that could further implicate them and the people running the website of engaging in criminal activity. This video by High Tech Grumpo was released six months ago and no doubt Shannon has probably already seen this video and knows. However, for some bizarre reason, she decided to continue to fight the much harder to prove case of defamation, libel and slander with Emily Artful rather than fighting the company that essentially were the catalyst. I mean, let's not forget yeah, Emily Artful's first video was titled Creepshow Art Has Always Been This Way. If Creepshow Art never got exposed by Lolcal, who knows if Emily would have even had the courage to have made the video it is that she made. This again only goes to show me that Shannon's interest is purely protecting Anthony. Because in my opinion, there was far more condemning allegations put against Anthony in regards to R word, etc., etc., than there was about Creepshow. And Creepshow, in my mind, could have essentially have said, I have nothing to do with what Emily is accusing me of and kept it pushing and left Anthony to fight his own battles. And that's another thing. Why hasn't Anthony said a word? One thing that stood out to me in the Anthony Witness Protection Program is that Anthony hasn't stood up for himself. Not online, not once, at all. Even Anthony's best friend, Bryce, came forward online to not only defend themselves against Emily's allegations and creep show art, but also Anthony as well. But given the situation, I am telling you these events so that you may have a better understanding of the person that you are choosing to believe and trust. As for the video in general that she's put out into the internet, um, in my opinion, it is a blatant cash grab off of a YouTube video, um, a result of a Amber Heard cancel culture. I've seen the video. From what I can tell, most of it is fabricated, but only in halves. For example, she makes a claim that I did not like Shannon at all during the time we were all living together. That part is true. I was very frustrated with everyone as I was also homeless. The fabricated part is trying to get Shannon fired. See, Emily fabricates things in half-truths. Half of it being a fact, and half of it being made up. It is a clever way to hide the lies and also the truth. 
I just struggle to understand how somebody who has been accused of R word stays so silent on the issue and doesn't even attempt to refute the claims themselves. Anthony's only response has been to change his name on YouTube, to delete multiple videos on his channel and to get everybody, Bryce, Creepshow, to do his dirty work for him without having to do anything or even taking any responsibility for himself. In my opinion, it comes down to one thing, narcissism. I believe that Anthony is the epitome of Gabby Hanna's narcissistic abusers. Oh, of course he is, babe, because he's a fucking sociopath. Because he's a narcissistic abuser. We're doing this for you. Using the people around him like puppets, manipulating them to do whatever he wants. So he never has to face anything in an honest and real way. People who are narcissistic keep their underlying doubts about themselves out of their awareness. Instead, they construct a defensive, full self facade that only includes data that states that they are perfect. In their mind, if they ever admit to having done a mistake, it is the equivalent of saying, I'm a complete and total fraud. In Anthony's case, I believe that he stayed silent so that he never has to admit or be questioned on who he is. Shannon has essentially become Anthony's fall guy. Because faced with a situation like this and my husband was accused of our word, there is absolutely no way that I would offer him a defense. He would have to defend himself. Because it's impossible to vouch for a situation that you simply were never there for. So Shannon telling Tipster that what happened to me is provably false is impossible. She was not there. She was not part of the equation. She did not have my blood to test it for drugs. I believe more than anything, the one thing that people struggled with when it came to Shannon's video was the ending. She gave no signs of remorsefulness, no accountability or acknowledgement for the role that she played. Just like the classic narcissist playbook. Deny, dismiss and devalue. I say all of this to say that I do not believe that my theory regarding Shannon and Anthony somehow absolves Shannon of sin. If we were to follow Emily Artful's allegations, Creepshow Art still engaged in criminal activity. Whether it was coerced or not, because Shannon still has the cognitive ability to be able to distinguish right from wrong. She still caused emotional harm to Emily, emotionally abused and harassed her for years, allegedly. And absolutely nobody can say that the depths of the trenches that Creepshot Art was willing to go to defend her husband by retrieving information as far back as 2006, from social media posts from when Emily Artful was like 14 or 15 years old, to create a character profile on Emily while she was a minor was wild. But for me, I can't remove myself from the idea that Emily's abuser is now Shannon's husband. She lives with him. Shannon literally gave up everything to live in a car and be with him. And I believe that above all else, above her career, her friends, her family, her audience, her art, her passion, the biggest thing that she could lose in her mind was him. And she'll do anything to keep him. I know that Shannon has recently said that I should never utter a single word in her direction. But if I was to tell her anything, based on my speculations, I would say the bed that you are lying in, you are lying in alone, but you didn't make the bed yourself. The truth is if Anthony was any kind of man or husband, he wouldn't have let you take the fall for the crazy ex-girlfriend who tried to ruin your career. He would have stood up for himself. He would have defended his wife's honor, but he didn't. He stayed silent. You know why? Because like all alleged abusers, he's a coward with no spine, no backbone. And the only way that he can stand up is if he allows others to stand in front of him. Like you and his good pal Bryce. The breakup between her and Anthony. Uh, Anthony came to me one day asking if I could break up with her for him because he had already tried three times and she persisted. Um, I was on the phone with her for probably 30 minutes, 40 minutes, as she pleaded to me to keep her relationship as if I had any say. I proceeded to tell her that it's over and there's nothing you can do about it because it's no longer your choice. 
in which she started screaming incoherently, and I hung up the phone. So truly ask yourself, who's in that bed with you? Or do you truly know who's sleeping next to you? Or are you sleeping alone? Oh my god, thank you guys so much for listening to my theory. I know a lot of this video wasn't based in fact, and I know that sometimes people take huge issue with not having like things that are tangible proof. But this is just what my heart said. This is how I felt. I truly believe that we are multifaceted individuals with ups, with downs, with goods, with bad. And I just, I truly don't believe that things are always so black and white, that there are always some varying shades of gray and that we'll always get, you know, Shannon's side, Emily's side, and somewhere down the middle, the truth. But will we ever know the truth? I don't know. I don't think the court of public opinion is the place to display this, but I also don't think that the judicial system does everything that's necessary to protect victims in these kind of circumstances. And I also believe that Emily has every right to speak her truth, even if these are allegations. I don't know, I just don't think we're ever gonna get an answer here. And honestly, in terms of internet cancellation I feel like the audience has already made their mind up on Shannon but my mind my mind is hella confused anyway with that being said don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like it as well as hitting the subscribe button with notifications if you do want to see video essays like this from me this is pretty much what I'm doing now and I'm really fucking enjoying myself I will have another video for you guys extremely soon it is a very different video no script we're just gonna be talking off the cuff, which is something I'm not very familiar with. But I feel like there needs to be a level of honesty on this channel that I just wanna to provide to you guys so that you guys know who the fuck I am. Truly, because a lot has changed in this pandemic. With that being said, have an amazing day or evening, whatever the hell it is that you're doing. Thank you for bearing with me whilst I've been sick. And until next time, you beautiful, amazing, badass bitches. It's been Paige. Bye. You're weird. Don't. Don't say that to me ever fucking again. Do not reach out to me ever again. That is not comforting. I <laughs> spent all my time trying to help victims of what I was actually accused of and to be told that my audience doesn't care about that is insane. Um, to the people who told me to kill myself, um, better luck next time. Thanks for playing. And to everyone else, go touch some fucking grass. I am done. I'm fucking done.